Hello, this is Angela Anderson. Thanks for joining me tonight. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to paint a rainy day watercolor inspired acrylic painting uh, using acrylic paints, obviously. <laughs> we'll be uh, about an hour, maybe less uh, for this. I don't think it's going to be super difficult. I'll show you how to achieve this kind of watercolor effect uh, on absorbent ground paper. So um, I've got my husband Mark with me tonight. Hey there, everybody. He'll be man and chat for us, so let's get started. Okay, so this is my example uh, image that I got off of Storyblocks, and I did my example on my uh, Canson Mixed Media uh, notebook to kind of try it out, and then I decided to uh, use a absorbent ground on a little canvas here and I'll show you how to do that here in a minute but uh, if you want some information about our sponsor for this video Storyblocks here's a little bit a clip for you. This video was sponsored by Storyblocks. The image we're using for today's painting tutorial was found in the Storyblocks member library. They have 400,000 images to choose from including high quality photos, vectors, icons, and more. I found so many amazing images and ideas to download, it was hard to pick a favorite. Everything you download is yours to keep and use forever, royalty free. You can also save 60% on artist created marketplace content. They're giving away seven free days, so you can try it out and access a massive variety of high res photos, vectors, and more from Storyblocks. So click the link in the description box below to get started downloading today. All right, so as you can see, I had a lot of images to choose from. It was hard, <laughs> but this one really stood out to me. I really love the uh, kind of watercolor effect, and I thought it'd be fun to kind of try it with acrylics. So um, you can do it on paper. So if you have like watercolor paper or mixed media paper, this is in my mixed media notebook. Uh, it buckles a little bit, but it didn't do too bad uh, with the acrylics on it, uh, even though we were kind of doing it more watery type effects on it. So uh, if you have one of these notebooks, you can just use that. Uh, but if you want to do it on a canvas, you can use Absorbent Ground. It's called Absorbent Ground White. It's a golden product. I think they have it in other brands as well. But uh, put that out of the way there. <laughs> My keyboard in the way. Uh, anyhow, I put it on kind of like uh, gesso. It's kind of thick. And um, oh, if I can get it open here, uh, you can see maybe. It's a little bit soupy, kind of like somewhat thick, and I just did two coats on the canvas and let it set overnight. I actually did one coat and let it set for a little bit and then did another coat. Once it was dry, you kind of let, let it dry completely and then leave it overnight to completely dry because you want it to kind of have this sort of papery texture. If it's too wet, I don't think it will work. So um, let's get started. You ready? I'm ready, but you did say soupy. Now I'm even more hungry. <laughs> That's true. We haven't eaten yet. <laughs> it's been a while. <laughs> I think I had early lunch today, too. So, uh, All right, let me go over our palette really quick with you here. I've got uh, uh, ultramarine blue, ultramarine blue, carbon black, titanium white. This is zinc white. Uh, it's, And I've got, if you have the golden fluid acrylics, it'll just kind of save you time. Uh but you can use heavy body acrylics as well. You just have to thin them down. Um, this is quinacridone magenta, pyrrole orange, uh, Indian yellow hue, Hansa yellow medium, yellow oxide. Uh, this is an interference oxide red. This is red iron oxide that's transparent, uh, burnt sienna, and burnt umber. And like I said, if you've got uh, the more fluid acrylics that work probably a little bit better for you, a little, a little bit easier to use, but if you don't have those, don't worry about it. You can just kind of uh, thin these out with some water and you can even use a little bit of airbrush medium or something like that if you are concerned, but this will really soak in the paint. Uh, so you don't really have to worry like you would um, with it, you know, soaking in um, like you would with a normal canvas because this will really accept anything you lay on it, pretty much. All right, I'm gonna dip my brush. I've got a large flat brush here, it's a number 12 bright, and I'm gonna dip it into water to start with. 
And we're going to work fairly quickly here, but I want to first lay down some water and that will just give us a, um, a little bit more working time when we're laying down our other colors on here. So I'm going to lay down this water on the background here. Do you want me to zoom in for this part? You can. <laughs> this is Get the, the details. Most part. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Okay. And some reason I keep getting these little fibers. I don't know where they're coming from. I think they might be from the edge of my water jar. I don't know, but didn't really seem to worry, bother the finished product too much. It's probably coming off my brush, or maybe the paper towel. I have no idea. So it could be the water bottle, <laughs> it could be the brush. <laughs> There's any number of culprits. <laughs> Let's go out and come back in. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it could be one of three. <laughs> Nobody expects fibers in their painting. Exactly. <laughs> all right, so I've got it all kind of watered down here, uh, just to kind of a nice uh, wash of water in the background here. And I'm going to start from... Let's see, let's start with our yellow. Ooh, that's bright. This is our Indian yellow hue. I'm gonna kind of lay it down up here at the top and then rinse out my brush and grab a little bit of the pyrrole orange. Ooh, that's really bright too. Let's grab a little burnt sienna. There we go. I'm kind of keeping away from that middle area just a little bit. And then I want to grab some ultramarine blue and burnt umber. And it might help if you mix these ahead of time so you kind of have them to work with so you can move quickly. And I'm going to put this up in the corners here. And you're going to get little bubbles. You can just kind of blow those off and they'll disappear for you. Kind of fun. <laughs> and I sort of did uh, sort of, I don't know, cross hatching or uh, I didn't go completely smooth with this. I wanted it to kind of, I don't know, blend and merge in uh, different ways. So like that and I'm going to grab the zinc white and a little bit of my yellow oxide here my zinc white was not fluid so it's wanting to be solid I have to thin it down a little bit there okay and I'm going to kind of brush through here and just kind of tap in some of this color around the edges of my yellow. Wipe that off and then kind of lightly streak it very lightly. And if it's kind of pulling the dark into the light too much, you can wipe your brush off, but it's pretty good there. Okay. So that's kind of the idea for the, the upper part. And then I'm going to let that set a little bit and work a little bit more on this bottom part. Maybe add a little bit more water down here so that it doesn't dry out on me. Of course, my water is dirty by now. <laughs> so it might help you to have a couple of jars of water. There we go. And let's use this dark color. I'm going to use a little bit of black down here at the bottom. Brown. And about, mm, about a third of the way down, I'm going to do my horizon line. So I want to kind of lay that across there. And then I'm going to brush in from the sides.
And don't worry, if you don't get this dark enough on this first time around, we can do this multiple times. Um, you know, we can let it dry and do it again. And, you know, so it doesn't have to be perfect the first time around. And the nice thing about this one is it's kind of, we're kind of encouraging these kind of interesting bloom things to happen. So um, it's kind of a little bit um, less fussy, less controlled than maybe um, a normal watercolor painting would be or a watercolor technique type painting would be because we're kind of trying to get it to do some interesting weird things. So the weirder the better, I think. Let's grab some of the pyrrole orange burnt sienna mix here. And down here at the bottom, I'm kind of doing these sort of horizontal streaking. You notice. All right. Oh, that's my finished painting right there. Is your finished painting? Mm hmm. All right. I'm going to. Start adding a little bit more on this horizon line of this darker color. Now that this is starting to dry up here, we can get it to sort of start blooming. The, what we're trying to do is get the, put wet paint on top of the drying paint. And what it'll do is create these large bloom effect. So I'm going to get some water, maybe a little bit of white, mix that with this yellow that I had going on over here. And I'm really going to lay in some heavy splattering. There we go. Just tapping on the top of my brush here. I can even use a larger brush, like a large round brush like this and dot in if I want it in specific areas. So like maybe I want some really obvious drippy areas right in here where the white is showing through in the canvas. So I can do some of that. I don't want to, you don't want to like paint across or paint, see here it's doing it right there. See how that's kind of lifting off the color underneath and it's going to create these kind of round, interesting effects. Almost like when we've done the, the um, oh, when we did um, alcohol, on to al alcohol blooms on the acrylic paint, and really you could do that as well if you didn't have um, the absorbent ground. You could try this with alcohol and put your wash of, acrylic paint down and then splatter it with alcohol and it would do this kind of little rounded um, effects as well. So that's another option. I didn't even think about that. That probably would have been easier. But I've been wanting to try this uh, absorbent ground, so it's it's good. I'm glad I tried it. It was fun stuff. Grab some burnt sienna. Maybe put in some more watery right along in here. I want this to merge up into my colors up here. I'm going to let it kind of shift. There we go. And if you feel like you've got too much color on there and it's it's kind of going out of control or your puddles are getting too big, what you can do is kind of come back through with a dry brush, dry brush out and just kind of soak up some of that extra moisture off of the canvas so it doesn't go into places where you don't want it to go. This is getting really interesting all through here. Actually, you want it to go this way, so I'm going to tilt it this way. It almost looks like a moonscape right there. Mm -hmm. Big old drop. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, it's looking pretty cool, actually. Yeah, it's pretty neat. It's fun, fun to play with this. 
All right, so let's grab some of my pyrrole orange and burnt sienna mix, and I'm going to just tap some of these smaller. Just give it a couple different colors. So the white's the bigger ones, and then I'm going back in with these smaller. There we go. All right. Very interesting. It almost looks like clouds, and well, that's the whole idea, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> hey, wow! Almost looks like clouds. Wait, oh. <laughs> I meant to do that, oh, didn't I? Painting. <laughs> So I wonder if I could use the soupy stuff on my next uh, stick man. Ooh, you could try it. Get all fancy like. I know. That'd be pretty awesome. I just had to find some unburnt blue. Unburnt blue. <laughs> I did say that last week, didn't I? He's never going to let me. Hey, it's a new color. <laughs> it's in kind of the same on family the as white and they were in cad blue. Yeah, here's some of the darker color here. Get some of that going on. Trying to get some in there. There we go. And really, you can kind of do as much or as little as you want on this. Uh, some of that darker color and sort of define our horizon line with a dark line. And it'll also lift off a little bit of our color where we want our person to be standing. So we can take a clean brush and kind of wipe back and forth and lift off some of that color where we want that highlight to happen. I'm going to pull some of that side to side down in here, create some lines in our foreground. Really, I'm kind of doing this all in one and one setting, but ideally you would kind of let this dry in between some of these layers um, and uh, and get, you know, build up the color a little bit more slowly, you know, kind of rushing things a little bit, but I definitely like what's going on here. It's pretty cool. I mean, your canvas is wet. I mean, I can see it glistening from oh, the Oh, it's angle very here. wet. Yeah, it's very wet and it takes a while for it to to dry so you definitely um, yeah, the side cam is showing the glistening there by your hand mm -hmm. for sure and what I did was um, kind of worked on it for a little while and then I would come back and splatter it some more and each time you splatter it you'll get different things happening because um, each layer of paint is starting to dry or you know do different things so um, yeah, that looks good. I think that's good enough. Whoop. We got a super chat from awesome. Lisa. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you so much for your contribution and support of the channel. Yes. Thank you very much. I guess I'll turn the disco lights off. Yeah, and I did want to say if you are new to our channel, we didn't uh, welcome you. Welcome to our channel and to our show here. We've... Uh, we do these twice a week, and Tuesday nights usually are kind of easier projects, more beginner level type stuff, uh, shorter, and uh, we're all about kind of helping you learn to paint in a fun, relaxing environment, providing uh, instruction step by steps. We do these live, so they're in real time, and you can see everything from the start to finish, how, how it all progresses. I didn't like how those were blending. Okay, I think I'm gonna just leave that. I think I'm liking that. Uh, I'm gonna leave that, and with the magic of TV here, <laughs> I worked on one earlier.
earlier today. And voila, it's finished. <laughs> take it out of it's the other dry. oven. <laughs> yeah, so uh, did this one earlier. Same same effects. It's, it's really interesting. I did this multiple times. I did it on different kinds of paper just to try it. And each time I got a little bit different. This was on watercolor paper. And I did a little bit more yellow on this one. And um, But each time I got different effects. So um, this one's much more runny. And um, if you want it more runny, what I did that's different from this one is I took my spray bottle. We can go ahead and do it now, see what happens. I don't want to put these out of the way, though. I don't want to ruin my sample one or get it wet at this point. But I took my spray bottle and I sprayed to encourage drips. So we'll see what happens here. Oh, look at that. Oh, it's, so, it's dripping. <laughs> it's dripping. There we go. Get it clear. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Who is it? <laughs> you get more where you want it to. Oh, wow. Oh, very, very drippy. And then I can kind of tab, you know, towel off areas where I don't want it to go too far. Of course, we're ruining all of our middle ground here by doing that. Lifting off some of that darker color. But we can always put it back in later. So, but that's how I kind of got that more drippy effect. That was very interesting. Oh, there's a lot of people in chat think that they can do the dripping part. They can do the dripping part. Good. So definitely... Really the key is to wait for it to just start drying. That's the thing. Otherwise it'll just all go away. You don't want that. Um, so you kind of just have to wait and for it just a little bit, kind of play with it a little bit. Um, wait for it to start to just start to get somewhat dry. And then, and really it was probably still a little bit wet, uh, especially down here, but, uh, but just practice, you know, get some, get some watercolor paper or something and, and play with it before you go to the canvas. This, this actually, I really liked this better than my watercolor paper. Um, for some reason, the whites, it, it lifted a lot easier on this than it did on the paper. It didn't uh, soak into the canvas as um, much. So it, it was easier to get some of these uh, effects for me, um, seemed like than when I was doing it on the watercolor paper itself. It seemed to like soak in and the colors didn't want to lift off as much. So, all right, I'm going to set this aside. If this was, um, well, well, actually I'll pull it back out. I'll try to remember to pull it back out when it's starting to dry because I kind of think we could do another set of drips on here and lift off even more and get some more of these blooms on it now that it's starting to drip. But we'll see if it dries enough in, in the meantime. Let me go over how I drew my girl, and I will use this little little watercolor paper one to do that. Um, I already pre-drew it on here just to save myself some time. Um, but I decided to change it up a little bit. Now, the original was um, a girl holding an umbrella over herself, and I, I found another image that also had like a dog where she was holding the image over her dog. And I thought that was really cute. So um, I decided to do that on that one. But I'll show you how to draw um, both kinds. So um, let's see here. You want to zoom in, hon? There we go. Okay, so you're going to figure out where you want your feet to, to set. And then the... Her feet are a little bit spaced apart. You're going to kind of do these little triangle shapes almost for boots. And then they'll be like a little bit of rounded calves. Not too rounded. You don't want her to look. Have, give her kinkles. <laughs> do another set a little bit thicker for the thighs. And then it might be a little bit far apart there. And then you're going to do her skirt. And her skirt's about halfway up her thighs or so. 
and then it kind of flares out to one side. Find her waist there. And then this one side has kind of a shoulder. Her arm kind of sticks out a little bit like that. And then this side um, would be the same if you're going to do her holding the umbrella above her head. Okay. Um, then the head is kind of just above the shoulders and then the, the hair kind of flares out on one side. If you're going to do the hat, the hat kind of does the same thing as the hair. It kind of does this bell thing. It flares out and it kind of dips down to the shoulders. Okay, so there's your girl. Now if you want her to have a little dog uh, holding the umbrella over her dog, you kind of pull her arm down at an angle off of that shoulder. Maybe bring that in a little bit so that it's not, uh, not got the arm. And... about right there give her a little circle for the fist and go straight up for the top of the umbrella it's going to angle down and over just slightly and then it's going to have another little dip down almost straight so the umbrella kind of goes out and then dips straight down a little bit more right there and there and then you're going to do these little series of scallops. So you're going to do two scallops there and there. You're going to do a scallop right here in the middle. And then you're going to connect those two. Like that. And then, is that close enough, honey? I feel like it's still pretty far away. I can see pretty good, but okay. I'll want to zoom in. There, that's better. Okay, and then for the dog, uh, I put him just kind of above her... Uh, her skirt just slightly and pretty close into her body so that he's kind of right up underneath that umbrella and his ears are going to do kind of this diamond shape straight across up down and in on either side and then his chin is kind of coming off this side and then his body angles out like that oops and then his legs right here he's he's a little bit too chunky there a little too far down I wasn't I wasn't thinking about where his he's ending you got to keep that in mind let's give him where he's ending okay there's his there he's ending right there so there there's his chest right there and then his legs bring his body in and then bring bring it back around like that Okay, so there's our little doggy. Cute. You knew that was coming, didn't you? It was going to come inevitably. <laughs> I just don't see any room for flowers in this one. So no, I'm there's no concerned. flowers in this one. Nope, nope. Oddly enough. Hey, I want to give a shout out to mm -hmm. Lily. Lily? She's, the, uh, she's a five-year-old girl Aww. who watches all your videos and... Really? And, uh, one, you know, does a kind of uh, make-believe YouTube while she's painting. So I <laughs> love it. <laughs> she's looking up to you. Oh. Ma hey, maybe Lily. she wants to be a sound and video person. <laughs> I don't know, or a blow dryer. Yeah, you might be out of a job. I know. <laughs> Just don't limit your options this early, Lily. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> big <laughs> someday you could blow dry <laughs> never know <It> could happen <laughs> okay so I'm mixing up the burnt umber and ultramarine blue and just kind of depends on you know what color you want it to be if you want it a little bit more blue or a little bit more brown I've got pretty much sort of 50 50 here I think and I'm gonna start putting uh, coloring her in. I did want to mention that I drew her with a graphite aquarelle pencil. So it is water watercolor pencil. Uh, so it's water soluble. It'll dissolve as I draw it in or I, I, as I paint it in. So I'm just going to carefully go through here and sort of go right up to the edges. 
And it, sometimes I find it helpful to draw it just slightly smaller than I want the, the finished product to be because that way uh, you can kind of control the edges a little bit better. You can change them out if you decide that you got it a little bit too wide somewhere or, you know, whatever. You can kind of change your drawing. So uh, when you draw yours, um, you might, you know, keep that in mind. Just kind of maybe slightly alter it so that it's just slightly inside. And that way when you go right up to the edge, you're not going to end up with a, a really wide, you know, uh, version of it. It'll stay fairly close to the size you want. All right, here's her little legs. And as you notice, I'm kind of adding a little bit of water as I work too, so that it's not a solid, I'm wanting it, you know, to, to retain that sort of watercolor -y feeling. So I am adding a little bit more water, letting it be a little bit transparent in places um, more than I might normally do. So we're kind of looking at it through a wet filter almost, you know, like you're looking at it through a, a lens that's rain soaked or something and for the and I've switched to a two aught round brush you can use just kind of a very small brush just whatever smallest one that you can sort of fit comfortably into this area there now you can see better how we draw drew that umbrella there And with the watercolors, the idea uh, is the way not to get lines in it is to always make sure that whatever edge is wet uh, is the is uh, where you kind of pull your next line from. Don't let your lines go dry before you paint. So in other words, I wouldn't outline the entire girl and then try to fill her in like I might with acrylic paint. Um, you want to do it a little bit as a, at a time and work your way from the top down <clears throat> so that you don't end up with an outline uh, effect on it. That makes sense. So I like that tip. Huh? I said I like that tip. Thanks. I know you were worried. Well, I was. I was thinking, does Mark think this is a good idea? Mm -hmm. or no? So now you can rest easy. Isn't that cute? I think it's so <laughs> cute. I can't stand it. Uh, little dog is getting the umbrella. <laughs> She's keeping her doggies dry. Actually, it was raining here today. Scooter has to wear his his uh, doggy uh, coat when he goes out in the rain. It's waterproof. And he hates it. He like puts his head down, but I think he, I think secretly he likes it because when he comes in, he take, you know, and I take it off, he shakes off like he's, you know, I, I think he would hate it worse if he had to go out in the rain and it was, you know, that's my, that's what I keep telling myself at least. It makes you he feel better. He probably wouldn't care less, but. You know, he comes in and happy that there were no other dogs out there that saw him like that. <laughs> that's what he's happy about. <laughs> like, whew. Yeah, right. I think you're right. You're right, probably. Okay, so I'm going to do the um, add extra water and do the reflections kind of mirror the angles. So try to kind of get that right if you can. And if you are having trouble with this, what you can do is um, you could... You could trace it and then uh, very lightly trace on your, you know, fold it in half and then you'd have your your uh, reflection. Although the reflection is not going to be an exact mirror image, obviously, because you're looking at it a little bit different angle, but it's close enough. So, and then by doing these kind of in lines like this, it kind of gives that sort of effect of that water. So, um, I'm kind of dabbing it on in in lines that way kind of get the that watery feel to it and then maybe Why 
we're just going to kind of fudge the umbrella because it's far enough away that we really don't have to put it in uh, real distinctly. Okay, now I'm going to grab, let me see what brush I want. Uh, let's grab a, grab a small flat, number two flat. And I'm going to do our kind of reflections here. So I'm going to grab a little bit of the kind of the same color that I was using there. And dab most of it off and I'm going to pull dry streaks across the bottom here. And it should skip, kind of skip across and create these sort of interesting I even might use a little bit of that black and see what that looks like. Oh, there we go. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. Good. Do a little bit here, do a little bit down in here. Make sure you're keeping these horizontal. You don't want to curve them too much. Let me see if I can wipe them off. Yeah, it's wiping off. It's not really wiping off the undercolor too too much, so that's good to know. Like I said, I've, I've really been playing with this because I have not used this absorbent ground before, so it's been really fun kind of playing with it and seeing, you know, the different effects that I could get with it. And I definitely like it. Um, definitely like it more than working on paper. It it definitely seems like it was a lot easier to get these more interesting effects than when I was working on paper. I think the paper dried faster, maybe that was why. Um, Just darkening up that horizon line there. A little bit there, maybe a little bit on this side over here too. Don't want to cover up all of my blooms, so I might want to tap off some of that color after I put it down. Just sort of deepening it out, but I don't want to cover up all of the interesting blooms and things that we had going on. We can always try tapping in some, let's try tapping in some of this white and yellow, splattering in some of that. Just a little bit over the top of our dog and girl. And then if you want to, in my in the photograph, there are some like trees right here, uh, little sticks. So I can use this and sort of do some horizontal lines, just using the edge of the brush, pressing it flat and sort of drawing in some sticks, tree-like shapes. I'm just crisscrossing in them a little bit. Um, you could also go in with a liner brush and you know do them a little bit more carefully if you want them to be really detailed. But um, what I'd make sure that you do is make sure that the where they that they're the same color as your foreground so that they kind of blend in to the foreground section so that they don't. Uh, look like they're just kind of setting out there on the horizon by themselves so just whatever color you use to do those um, if you choose to do them just make sure that you have it matching the foreground color there all right we're pretty much done not too bad huh
how long? 42 minutes? Very good. Mm, okay, so one thing I did want to say with this, uh, with this absorbent ground, you will want to cover uh, your, uh, get a soft gel medium or some sort of uh, glazing uh, medium, not glazing medium, but uh, like clear gel, self leaven there's, I've got some self-leveling clear gel, uh, soft gel medium, anything like that. Uh, add a little bit of water to it. Let this dry, obviously, for a couple of days first. And then uh, coat it so that that'll protect it. Because this is super absorbent still. So uh, anything that we got on it would soak right in and be almost impossible to get it off. So um, be sure that you do that. Um, be sure that you... Uh, give it a clear isolation coat of some sort uh, with some sort of protective gel medium and then uh, you can varnish over the top of that. But the gel medium will give it an isolation barrier and prevent any more absorption of colors and things uh, from happening. So anyhow, hope you've enjoyed this. I have enjoyed bringing it to you and uh, be sure to check out Storyblocks. There's a link down in the description to their website. If you are interested in the seven day free trial, I definitely am going to go back and check out more and uh, any of the downloads you can keep forever and use those uh, for any royalty free purposes. So um, you'll probably be seeing some more of their stuff in some future videos because I found a lot of really interesting stuff on there. All right. Thanks guys so much for watching tonight and we will see you next time. Bye.